You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. A division of RCE is now the Spark Radio Network. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. Joe had huge problems with the IRS. I knew it was coming. I hadn't filed taxes since 1990. All the IRS letters coming in added up to a nightmare. It got up to like $68,000. My heart started beating fast. It's like, there's no way, man. I mean, I ain't going to be able to do this. Then they stopped his paycheck. So that's when I started making phone calls and found U.S. Tax Shield. U.S. Tax Shield went to work immediately. They just took the bull by the horns. What blew my mind is he called the IRS right then and there. So why is U.S. Tax Tax Shield A plus rated with the Better Business Bureau? Joe knows. They saved me a ridiculous amount of money. If you owe more than ten thousand dollars to the IRS or state, choose the company Joe chose. U.S. Tax Shield. It was the best decision I made. U.S. Tax Shield is the way to go. Life is good. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> Call eight hundred four seven one thirty two eighty seven. U.S. Tax Shield. Boo raw. Yes. <laughs> 800-471-3287 The internet will never be the same You're listening to K98talk.com We will keep this promise to the American people. If you like your doctor, you will be able to keep your doctor, period. If you like your health care plan, you will be able to keep your health care plan, period. This is the most transparent administration in history. Not even a smidgen of corruption. Fact is, we had four dead Americans. What difference at this point does it make? If you've got a business, you didn't build that. Keep on doing what you do, Rick. You're my favorite host, favorite host, favorite host. It's time to hear the truth about America's biggest challenges. You're listening to America Off the Rails with your host, Rick Robinson. Well, good evening, folks. This is Rick Robinson. I'm the host of America Off the Rails, and it is Friday. That's right. We have finally made it through another work week, and 
the next couple of days are ours. Of course, that is if you are lucky enough to have a Monday through Friday type job like I have when I'm not sitting on the radio. For those of you who this is not your Friday, I'm very, very sorry. Hopefully your Friday will come soon enough. It's been an interesting day today, folks. Um, spent some of the day uh, when I was uh, not at the day job going back and forth with a bunch of crazy folks on Twitter. I have to say, social media has gone insane. It's like everybody is just completely just gone nuts. And it's all centered around Sanders and Trump. It's all anybody talks about. There's been hashtags going all night about, you know, we are Bernie, blah, blah, blah. Look, I mean, come on, dude. Look, if you're really so ready for a socialist government, then please just go somewhere where it already exists. A lot of us enjoy freedom and we're watching it slowly being taken away from us as it is. And we don't want it to go any further away than it already has. And that's why for most of the day I spent, uh, when I wasn't working, arguing with someone who shall remain nameless who is a diehard Trump supporter and basically because I diametrically I am diametrically opposed to Donald Trump all of a sudden I'm the enemy and I'm doing the party an injustice because I'm not getting behind the front runner what I kept trying to explain this in, to this individual over and over and over again is it's not time to fall in line behind the front runner and if the front runner is Donald Trump I don't even think I could do it if I had to. But the point is, we're not even there yet. I mean, and this guy was crazy. He was all, oh, wah, wah, wah. You just don't want to eat what's for dinner. Poor little crybaby. I'm like, look, dude, first of all, to use your analogy, the menu hasn't even been set yet because we're still in the primary. Second of all, all I'm telling you is why are asking is why are you going to vote for someone who is basically the same as the guy that we have now? And a lot of you right now are rolling your eyes because you're like, Rick, 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 there's no way he's as bad as Obama. There's no way he's the same as Obama. I'm telling you, he is. It's the same concept. A relatively unknown quantity politically. And he wants the same things. And we will talk about that as the show goes on. But I want to make you guys understand. I'm not saying these things because I dislike Donald Trump. And it's taken me a while to get there because you know what? I don't know Donald Trump personally. As far as I know, he could be either the worst man on the planet or the best man on the planet because I do not know him personally. What I do know is I'm not mad at Donald Trump. I'm mad at my party. I am mad at my party because you guys are the ones that have left those of us that are conservative completely behind. This is evidence from the treatment of the National Review Online. It really is just that simple. I mean, so there's there's a, there's a blog or a paper or whatever you want to call it that's online, and they come out and they start giving the reasons why they don't think, using, that, using base examples, why they don't think Donald Trump is the best conservative choice. And yet now they're being lambasted by everyone. And now all of a sudden, Donald Trump has become the new establishment darling. Interesting how that happened shortly after he started talking about how he wanted to make ethanol a much, 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 much bigger program, which has always been a darling of the establishment, no matter which side of the, the aisle you're looking at. Because everybody in the establishment is all about subsidies and control. This is the point that I've been trying to make for weeks. There is really no difference when it comes down to it fundamentally between Barack Obama and Donald Trump. And if you don't believe me, I'm going to be able to prove it to you here in just a second. I'm going to pull up something that was sent to me in an email today. And then we're going to go through it line by line, item by item. Bear with me for a second while I get to it here. Well, I thought it would be easy to find. Oh, wait, there we go. Uh, so actually, we're going to take things in a little bit different direction first. Oh, wait, here's the one I'm looking for. And then I have something else that was sent to me today that I want to go ahead and, and uh, talk about today, too. Now, for those of you that are starting to find me via email, that is honestly one of the easiest ways to communicate with me if you're not fond of Twitter. I don't spend much time on Facebook anymore. You are welcome to send a friend request 
to my professional profile over there, though. I do get on there occasionally, and I will uh, correspond with you when I'm there. But if you have questions, comments, concerns, you can always reach me at one of two email addresses. Uh, those are rick at k98talk.org or ricky at the sparkradionetwork.com. Uh, both of those do work, and I will respond to you as quickly as I can. But now, this is something that I'll probably put out on Twitter after the show. <coughs> Pardon me. To go along with illustrating the point that I'm about to make. This is actually a meme that somebody sent me in an email. And it has a picture of Barack Obama on one side and Donald Trump on the other. And there's a bunch of different columns with check marks. And below each picture, it goes over the following things. Um, insulted Ronald Reagan. For Barack Obama, there's a check mark. For Donald Trump, there's also a check mark. Thinks single payer works. And if you don't believe me, we'll have an audio clip of that later. Uh, Barack Obama, check. Donald Trump, check. Either wants to raise taxes or has raised taxes. Uh, Obama, check. Trump, check. Pro-choice. Obama, check. Trump, check. Proven liberal track record. Obama, check. Trump, check. Said Hillary Clinton did a great job as a Secretary of State. Obama, check. Hmm. Trump, check. Pro-gun control. Obama, check. Huh. Trump, check. Cult following that defends his questionable past and does so quite vehemently. That last part was added in by me based on Twitter conversations I've been having all day. Um, Obama, check. And again, Trump, check. Hmm. Offers hope and change without any specifics. Well, we know Obama did that. Isn't that basically exactly what Trump's doing? Hmm. Go figure. So check mark to both of those. Uh, for universal health care. Hmm. That would be a check for both of them. Has donated to Harry Reid and Nancy Pelosi. Check and check. So again, when you line them up side by side and you look at them, and I know that's only a microcosm of the things that they both actually stand for, but when you look at them side by side like that, for those of you that are like, oh my God, Trump is, Trump is going to make America great again. It's going to be huge. It's going to be huge. I don't understand your train of thought. I really don't. Because we've already had this for seven years. And we've gotten nowhere. Look, it's the same thing that I've been trying to point out for weeks. And another story that broke about Donald Trump today that I'm going to use as a prime example. Because this is just another example of how he works. If you look at his Twitter account, it looks like he has millions of followers. But if you run a simple program that runs an algorithm to check to see how many of the followers are active and where their IP addresses are located, you will find that according to that particular algorithm, over one million of, of his followers appear to be dormant or paid for or both. So basically what you're saying is, or what this tells us is, that Donald Trump not only buys politicians, but he also buys his own popularity. Also evidenced by the fact that a story broke shortly after he started running for president that he was paying people to attend his campaign rallies. I'm sorry. I think I would, I could, if I had the ability to hand anybody that wanted to come listen to me for an hour or so, 50 bucks, I'm pretty sure I could be to the point where I was turning away people too. And then there'd be people that were mad at me because they didn't get the 50 bucks. But Hey, what do I know? I'm just a talk show host. And no, Ron, you are exactly right. They are both demagogues. And you didn't misunderstand the word. So, But my, my, I, I don't know. At this point, I digress. And you know what? I've kind of had enough of hearing myself talk about it. So the first thing I really want to do is play a couple of different clips that I have of Donald Trump. And then, sadly, I have something that I have to play for Man Coulter just to kind of bring the point home. And then I found something that was pretty disturbing about Sanders. We'll probably cover that for the last half of the show. Um... We're going to play the longer clip first. This is from uh, Donald Trump uh, on a recent appearance on The Letterman Show talking about health care. 
Southeast. David, it depends on how it's sold. If you sell it, I mean, it's something that can be sold. But if well, you they, sell they it, well, they were proper, just giving them the money. They were they saying, were giving the, the money. money. And even that, they can't sell. If you think about it. But look, we had a uh, you know we had a little website that cost five billion dollars, and it still doesn't work. The Obamacare website, which Does, is a very sure? it doesn't work at all. It's it's working a little bit, but it's not working very well. I can tell you. That. Are you are you signed up for Obamacare? No, I haven't signed up. <laughs> I haven't. I, I decided. I think I'm going to pass. Yeah. But what, I want something that works. But what would be what would be wrong with a, a, a medical system that does uh, treat people uh, reasonably at a cost? But medical well, I expenses agree are with that. crazy. I agree. I, I agree, and I, I fully subscribe to the fact that we have to take care of the people. But there are much better systems. The people that had good plans are losing those plans, and they have deductibles that are through the roof. They can't have their own doctor. They can't have their own plan anymore. And that was not the way it was sold. It was sold much differently than that. And people are being really badly hurt. And and it doesn't really kick in until 16, and it's going to have a devastating effect on the economy. You can have a better no, I, plan no, for less. I don't, I don't know enough about it to say that's not true, but I think that's not true. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd like to see, I, I would like to see a plan. I would like to see a plan that could be better and cost less for the people. And I, you can do that. I, I have, and I've, so I've told this story many times. I have traveled to other countries, and while in the other country, I have injured myself. And I have had to go to a hospital or to a clinic, uh, clinic and, and, and had uh, myself taken care of. Right. And, and in one case, it was, uh, I had an arm reattached. And <laughs> at the end of the procedure, uh, they said here, they wrote me up, they said go to the, it was like $12. Yeah, yeah. $12. No, it's true. It's so true. now, what, what, would, what would be well, wrong I had with a, that? Well, I had an instance in Scotland where a friend of mine was in Scotland recently. He got very, very sick. They took him by ambulance. He was there for four days. Mm -hmm. He was really in trouble. And they released him. And he said, where do I pay? They said, there's no charge. And not only that, he said it was like great doctors, great care. Yeah. I mean, we could have a great system in this country if Are we had people. Are people afraid of socialism? Is that well, they're afraid about? of a lot of things. I mean, I think they're afraid of a lot of things. But mostly it's incompetence. I mean, how do you spend, I mean, this is a, a number that's a real number. How do you spend $5 billion on a website? Just the creation of the yeah. site itself. And it doesn't work. So there are things, and the fraud and abuse are incredible, as you understand. But it would be great to have a system. Fraud and abuse. Can you prove to me that there has been fraud and abuse? Let's see the just, paperwork just look on at, that. Just look at your doctor's bills. I mean, you look at the doctor's bills, and fraud you look at what you look at what some of these doctors do, and some of the money that they make. And you go to other countries, and you see what they make. It's a whole different world. And there are there are things that you could do to give unbelievable health care at a lesser cost, not only to the government, but to the people, and a much better health care system. And there are a lot of things, and it's a very complex subject, unfortunately, sure. but yeah. there are many, many things that could make it much better. Ben, now let me ask you a question to uh, uh, change the, the topic altogether. Do you need a permit for that hair? Yeah. <laughs> it never fails. <laughs> It never failed. That's all I, that's it, all I it got. It is mine. That's it is all mine. I got. We'll be right back with Donald Trump, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so I could have been nice and edited out the hair shot, but come on. Dude, it looks like he's got a triple on his head. I still wonder if the if the hair is actually the, the man behind the voice, so to speak. Because it just, I don't know, it looks like some sort of alien organism has just grafted itself to his head. All right, so anyway, so we heard him basically starting to flirt with the idea that you know we need some sort of socialized health care he didn't really come out and say it there but you could kind of get it in the underpinnings but let, let's pin him to the mat shall we because we've got him actually saying it right here everybody's got to be covered this is an unrepublican thing for me to say because a lot of times they say no no the lower 25 percent they can't afford private but universal health care i am going to take care of everybody I'm, i don't care if it costs me votes or not everybody's going to be taken care of much better than they're taking care of now the uninsured person right is going to be taken care they're of going to be how? taken care of how i would make a deal with existing hospitals to take care of people and you know what? This is probably... Make a deal. Who pays for it? The government's going to pay for it, but we're going to save so much money on the other side. All right. So, you know, for those of you 
And I know you. I know you're tuning in because those of you that troll my timelines all day, like a large, uh, about half a dozen of you have been doing all day. You love to tune into the show and then shoot me nasty emails. Hey, that's great. That's fine. I won't even call you out and won't mention any names. The fact that you're taking the time to listen, I don't really care if you agree with me or you disagree with me. I'm just trying to make you think. But here's the point. To the one of you that I know is listening right now who kept saying to me over and over and over again today that Donald Trump would not be stupid enough to try to socialize medicine, he just told you in his own words that that is exactly what he plans on doing because he thinks it's the way to fix it and he thinks in the long run it's the way to save the government money. We're hearing the same things from this man that we heard from Obama when conservatives heard those things, they gasped and they said, there's no way, there's no way that our country could vote for this man because look at the ideas that he espouses. And now, seven short years later, just seven years later, because there's now this cult of personality moment, everybody, and I mean everybody, who is this armchair guaranteed quarterback, this guy's going to be president, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. I mean, everybody from my local stations here to friggin' Sean Hannity, Rush Limbaugh, and for God's sake, even Mark Levin are touting the glories of Donald Trump. And I'm over here waving my arms saying, hey, socialist to the left of me and crony capitalist to the right, and I'm stuck in the middle clinging to my Bible, my guns, and my constitution. What happened to the constitutional conservatives? Where did they go? Are we gone? Am, 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 I, am I the last one left? Did um, Was there some sort of a constitutional conservative rapture and I missed the boat? And was I not constitutionally conservative enough so I got left behind? Because I'm feeling alone here, folks. I really am. I feel like we're, wa- we're watching... We're watching basically... The I don't know any other way to put it. The political version of the old Roddy Piper movie, They Live, where there's a handful of people that are awake and they see the crazy crap that's going on and the rest of the world is buying it hook, line, and sinker and we're looking at it going, do you not see the giant train wreck that we are heading straight forward? Straight toward the the track. There, It's broken. There's like piled up cars all down on the down over here in this ravine and we're heading straight for it and everybody's just like oh make the country great again donald trump's gonna save us no donald trump doesn't give a damn about you me or anybody else donald trump only gives a crap about himself but again i can't really be mad at donald as much as i want to be mad at donald i want to focus my anger at donald but i can't because if i do that i'm missing the point because this is our fault We are the reason that Donald Trump is surging in the polls. Because we fell asleep at the switch. It's the same thing that I've been saying since the day that I started this damn show. We got so busy wrapped up in our day-to-day lives and trying to keep up with the Joneses and trying to get food on the table and bills paid and keeping up with who's got the nicer car and who's got the bigger TV and, hey, I spent more money than Joe down the block on Christmas time and I spent more money than Susie when it came to Valentine's Day, so we're doing pretty good. Except, you know, the, the, the thing we missed, the thing we missed is our country has been slowly and quietly crumbling under our feet and we were asleep we were asleep we thought enough people woke up in 2008 we thought i thought i know all of you that listen to this show thought well except for the handful of you that hate me that's all right we may not get along on twitter but i still love you as a person but the point is we thought 2008 was going to be our year Because there was no way, no way that once Hillary Clinton started dropping in the polls and and Barack Obama started coming up in the polls, everybody was anybody in the conservative movement said it was a lock. It was a shoe in. We were set. We were ready to go. There was no way that anybody was going to vote for this. No account. No good. Nobody knows what the hell he's done. Guy from Chicago who basically spent a couple of terms in his local uh, state house, and then, what, half a term in Senate? Maybe full term before he became president? Hell, I don't even remember. All I know is he's had little to no political experience. But again, 
we are where we are now because of us. So as much as I want to lash out at Donald Trump and as much as I want to rip the triple off of his head, it's not his fault. And this is this has been a hard realization for me, folks, because you've listened to me over the last few months, because when Donald Trump first came onto the scene, I was just like a lot of the folks that are following him now. I bought into what he was saying. It was a breath of fresh air because he was saying the things that I was thinking. But then I started looking at not what was coming out of his mouth, but what he was actually doing, which is nothing. He gives you no substance. He gives you no idea of how he's going to do the things that he's going to do. He just tells you that he's going to get it done because he's going to make deals and it's going to be huge. And when you call him out on it, oh, you're, you're, just, you're, you're just attacking me. This, this person over here on Fox News, yeah, this Megyn Kelly, yeah, somebody should censor her. She's attacking me. And people, people love me because, it's, because, because I'm this big star and I'm huge. I make people money. I make deals all day long. I can, I can hand you a $5 bill like it's toilet paper because I make deals all day long. Yes, I know. I can't do Donald Trump. I've tried. Uh, there's only a handful of voices that I can do. Most of them usually involve things like Cartman from... Uh, from uh, Anyway, you know what show Cartman's from. I'm having a brain fart moment. <sighs> Mainly because I'm getting myself all worked up here. But anyway, my point here is we've been listening to this guy and everybody keeps listening to what he's saying. And as more of us are starting to wake up, we're looking around and going, why are all of these people still listening to this guy? But let me tell you why they are. And this is why I tell you it's our fault. We, as a party, are promoting this guy. I mean, the, the three biggest people in talk radio, number one, number two, and number three, have him on the air, or they're talking about him almost every day, and it's in a positive light. When I talk to you about Donald Trump, I'm not trying to attack him. I'm trying to let you understand that he really is not who he's claiming to be, and he never has been. And it's not just radio. I mean, listen to this, and then we really do have to take a break, but I'm going to let this play. And some of you are going to wish I hadn't, uh, because this is Ann Coulter, but it proves a point. It's Trump all the way. No one is voting for him because of the insults. No one is voting for him because he was a reality TV star, it's because of immigration. I mean, that's the number one issue. Americans have been begging their leaders, please stop, stop. You're killing wages. You're killing our neighborhoods. And all the fancy people, the consultants and, and the people running the media in New York, they're not the ones being burdened by these swollen waves of third world immigrants pouring into the country. It is heavily the working class, black teenagers, their unemployment rate is through the roof. Well, who's taking those jobs? illegal immigrants. So Americans have been asking for this for a long time. And the other aspect of that, that Trump's candidacy is really exposing, like I never thought could get exposed, is how every other one of these Republicans cannot take the pro-American position because their donors don't want it. That's it. They are completely beholden to elites who do not care about America, don't care about historic America, don't care about traditional America. No, the rich are like locusts. They will just come into a country, eat it dry, and what, what does a rich person care about America? They're going to move off to an island. And these Republican consultants and Republicans in Washington generally are perf perfectly happy being the Washington generals. They know how it works. We're going to do the same thing every year. We're going to be good losers. I'm going to take home a fine income. I'll be able to pay for my kids' college. Woe is Trump exposing them. If you give me 20 to 1 odds, I'm betting Trump. The fact that he is so high in the polls and has been this high in the polls for this long, this is not a flash in the pan. A flash in the pan is, oh, this person seems nice. Let's all be for him this week. And then you hear him talk. <laughs> no, no, we've heard Trump talk and he just keeps going up in the polls. And the intensity with Trump is like nothing I've seen since I was a little kid and Reagan was running. And I've gone back and looked at what people were saying at the time about Reagan. And, and they were saying, this is America's last shot. After four years of Jimmy Carter, and there is that sense 
among a lot of Trump supporters, and I'm, I'm one of them, I think this is America's last shot because the elites are about to win and are about to transform our country into just another Mexico. All right, she was going to keep talking for about another three or four minutes. I honestly couldn't listen to it anymore. But there, there you have it. And these are the people and these are the reason why Donald Trump is where he is. Because he's being propped up by conservatives. He's being propped up by the media. Look, it's the same thing they did with, with Romney. They pick out the guy that they know they're going to be able to beat when it comes right down to it, and they pump them up, and they make them look great. And then when their side decides who they're running against or who they're, who they're going to put up, then it all changes. This playbook has been the same for the last two cycles. So for all of you that are like, oh, Trump is leading in all the polls and has been for seven months and blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Yeah, it's really easy when the media likes you. And whether you want to admit it or not, this whole back and forth that's going on with the media right now and Trump, they're both working angles. Neither one of them dislikes the other, but they're both working angles. And the simple fact of the matter is we are falling for it hook, line, and sinker. But at this point, folks, it is officially into the bottom half of the show, so I do have to take a bit of a break. We'll be back here in just a couple of minutes right after we pay a few bills. Do not go away. This is Rick Robinson. You are listening to America Off the Rails, and I will be right back. All right, folks, this is Rick Robinson with you. I want to tell you about some friends of mine from a company called Security Enforcement Specialists. When I ran my security agency for 12 years, I worked with one of these partners on a daily basis. He's been involved in this agency now, and with his other partner, they do have over 30 years of experience in the private security industry. If you own a business and you need someone to keep you or your customers or residents safe, then I highly recommend contacting Security Enforcement Specialists today. Give them a call at 405-703-1796. Again, that's 405-703-1796. Again, tell them Rick from K98 Talk sent you. Like I said, if you need the help, they are here for you. So make sure that you uh, go look them up, check them out, and see what they can do. The wrong way. Welcome to the place. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough as nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. If you want to work until you keel over, have less of everything in retirement, or give back more of your hard-earned money to the stock market again, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to protect the money you save, receive a steady, predictable retirement income, and enjoy financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. You can download a free report that reveals the wealth-building secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. You'll learn how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, and real prosperity without risking your money in the Wall Street casino and how to get the money you need when you need it simply by asking for it. This is the best way to have a 100% secure retirement and know your money will last as long as you do. To learn more about this method and to get your free report, go to 29security.com. That's the number 29security.com. 29security.com. Go to 29security.com. The staff of K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network is proud to announce that our very own Rowdy Rick Robinson has been selected as one of the top conservative talk show hosts in the nation for his program, America Off the Rail. Again, congratulations to Rowdy Rick Robinson for a job well done and another reason to stay connected to K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network.
All right, guys. We're ready for our Four Seasons sunroom, and Daddy's going to get a rec room with refreshments. Oh, no. We'll be sleeping under the stars. Mom, what about the one with, you know, the fun? Nice try, little bro. It's a gym. My gym. Hey, Grandma's getting her Four Seasons garden room. Weather tight and still like being outdoors. Maybe a living room. Oh, no, wait. A family hub. Yeah. Yeah. No matter what the budget, the season, or the climate, Four Seasons Sunrooms let you and your family enjoy the outdoors inside. Call now to receive your free, no-obligation brochure from the premier manufacturer of sunrooms since 1975. More reasons for Four Seasons Now. To find out more, call toll-free 800-928-7007. That's 800-928-7007. Call 800-928-7007 today. All right, folks, we are back. We are live. This is America Off the Rails. I'm your host, Rick Robinson, and we are into the bottom half of the show. This is Friday night, though, so we may go over a few minutes. Who knows? I can always edit out when I send it over to the, to the affiliates and chop it down. Um, so I'm not sure how long the show is going to go. For those of you who are staying up late, if you need to bow out, you know where to find me at a podcast. That's great. Do have a lot of folks hanging out with me tonight. Wanted to give a shout out to a couple of folks that I know are listening. Uh, Big Ron. Uh, I know you're out there. Also, I've seen JR make a few comments here and there. So just want to say thanks for hanging out with me late tonight, folks. I know there's more of you out there, but I don't have your, your names right in front of me for the moment. So I do apologize if I'm not mentioning you. Alan Beaker, I know you're listening too. So I want to make sure I throw you guys out there. For those of you who don't know, Alan Beaker are the parody band, uh, Third Row Ramblers, that actually started with JD and Stacy and have kind of been adopted by the Spark Radio Network. They now get their parodies played pretty much anytime I can, if I can work it in anywhere. And they're really great. And not not, j- just to give him a bit of a shout out, I just found out tonight that uh, Al's group, uh, uh, his, his other band, his actual band that he does, has actually been put on iTunes. So if you want to find more out about them, when I figure out their name and all that other stuff, I'll probably start plugging them a little bit. But if you're not following them both on Twitter, I suggest you do so as quickly as possible. Uh, they are a riot to hang around and both very intelligent folks. So, uh, back to what we were talking about before I took the break. Decided I had to go ahead and take a break because I was getting to the point where I thought I was about to have an aneurysm. But this next bit is not really going to make it any better. I'm just going to be completely honest with you here. Uh, Because this next bit, you know, we've talked about the right side of the equation. And then we've talked about Obama, who's a lefty. But we've got an even bigger lefty in the the equation. And no, I'm not talking about Hillary. Not yet. Anyway, we'll get to her probably on another show. But I did find something today that kind of summarizes Bernie Sanders in about three minutes. And it also made my head nearly explode in about that amount of time. So um, if you have duct tape near you, I highly recommend that you wrap your head real tight and buckle up because here we go. Here's the simple truth that in America we have millions and millions of working people who are working hard but are not making enough money to put bread on the table or to take care of their kids, and that has got to end. Today, all over America, you got mom working, you got dad working, occasionally you have the kids working, and we still don't have enough money to pay the bills. Something is fundamentally wrong about that. The problems we face did not come down from the heavens. They are made, they are made by bad, human decisions and good human decisions can change them it is time that the united states of america join the rest of the industrialized world and guaranteed health care to all people as a right not a privilege given the incredible wealth and income inequality in america today we need fair elections which means public funding of elections My Republican friends just decided to put another $38 billion into the military. Maybe we can cut military spending a little bit and put it into education. A hundred years ago, women didn't even have the right to vote. Change takes place because people struggle. Within the next month, I will introduce legislation that will make every public college and public university tuition free. 
I am in this business because I have four beautiful kids and I have seven beautiful grandchildren. And like you, I want to make sure that the world that we leave them is a beautiful world where people can live full and dignified lives. I don't want to see a world where people are struggling and stepping over each other. And we can do it. We can provide health care to all of our people. We can create decent paying jobs. We can reverse climate change and transform our energy system. We can raise wages we can make sure that every person in this country gets the education they need and desire. This is not some type of utopian dream. It can happen. It really can. But it will not happen unless we stand up and fight back for not only ourselves, but for our kids and future generations. Let's do it. All right, so the title of that clip, because uh, I actually just found it um, earlier today and I listened to it and I was like, you know, this kind of dovetails into everything else I was going to talk about, so why not run with it? In 180 seconds, you will be voting for Bernie Sanders. Instead, what this clip made me want to do is basically vomit. So let's take a few things kind of in reverse order. One of the, one of the things that stood out to me the most was the part where he talks about Nothing, no change comes without struggle. You know, he's talked about the suffrage movement, women's right to vote. And the only reason that it came about was because of people's struggles and the fact that they had to push through and they had to persevere. Yet then a couple sentences later, he says, but I want to make it so none of you ever have to struggle. So I'm confused. Is struggling a good thing or is struggling a bad thing? Because here's the other thing. That this guy always likes to do. Mom has to work. Dad has to work. Sometimes even the kids have to work. But they can't afford to pay the bills. This has to change. Let me tell you something, Mr. Sanders. It could change. Except now, mom and dad can't afford it, but they're trying to drive an Escalade. Mom and dad can't afford it, but they're trying to buy an 80-inch TV. Mom and dad can't afford it, but they're trying to buy $6,000 worth of furniture for a $4,000 house. This is the problem. We don't hold people accountable anymore. This stuff does not need to be free. We do not need to raise wages. We need to make sure people understand that they need to live within their means. This was something that we used to understand. This was something that was common in America. And then these things called credit cards started coming up upon the scene. And then these financing companies started coming upon the scene. And then all of a sudden, all of these purchases that used to be manageable, if you would save a little bit, like a car and even a house, were all of a sudden starting to become elevated and inflated because there was third parties in the way. It's the same thing that's happened with our medical system. We put a third party in the middle so nobody's really paying attention to what they're actually buying anymore because they don't care. They get a bill in the mail at the end of the month and it says this, is, or actually they get a statement that first says this is not a bill. This is the statement that we've sent to your insurance company. Eventually, your insurance company may contact you and either ask you for additional information or ask you to pay X amount of dollars. This is the same thing we've done with everything. We have turned everything into a financial debacle. All of it. From buying a house to buying a car. You can't go, I mean, you, you can't go anywhere anymore without somebody asking you if you want a credit card. And this guy wants to tell us that it's, that, that it's because wages are not high enough. Let me tell you what's going to happen if we raise wages. They're not going to know what to do with the money. It's going to be the same thing that happens when somebody wins the lottery. They're going to blow it before they know what happened, and they're just going to take out another credit card because now they can afford it. They're going to buy more crap they don't need, and then they're still going to be complaining because they can't pay their bills because they got to pay all the credit cards. Look, let me tell you a way this will work because in, in, one, in, in one instance, I actually do agree with Bernie. I think that people should make more money. I really do. I think there should be two different types of pay scales. If you are below the age of 18 and you're working fast food and you're still enrolled in school, there should be a baseline minimum wage for you. If you are an adult though, and this is where I'm going to be a lot different than Bernie Sanders, I don't think there should be a minimum wage for an adult. What I think there should be are incentives for the companies that pay adults and hire adults to pay them more money. It, we've tried the stick approach now for 50 years. Well, we, we're going to keep raising this wage because you're not taking proper care of your workers. Let's, let's get out of the way. Let's get the government out of it. Let's make it an incentive. 
We have all of these programs that are supposed to be incentives, and everybody talks about how well they work, but we weren't we weren't our government like it's still the old beat them to death till they comply rule. I don't understand it because it's really simple. You figure out what you want the target median income to be for an employer, and then you say if you get to the point where you pay X amount of your adult your adult employees this amount of money, then we will give you X amount percentage of a tax break for every bracket that you fall into. So you make it an incentive for the companies to pay their people more money instead of making it something that they feel like they have to pass on to the consumer because that's the part that nobody wants to talk about. I have been through minimum wage being raised now three times. Each time it has raised at every single price in every single area has shot up by anywhere from 10 cents to a dollar. I'm not kidding. One of the first times that minimum wage went up, I was like 19 years old working at McDonald's. I went to bed one night and a friggin' medium soft drink was like 89 cents. I wake up the next day, minimum wage goes up. I go into work, medium soft drinks, $1.39. It doesn't work when you make the government do it like they're the bad guy. Because all it does is piss off the people that are running, running the businesses. And then all they do is pass off the cost to the consumer. So what winds up happening is, yeah, you get somebody that's now suddenly making $15 an hour, but now it costs another dollar to get a loaf of bread and another 25 cents to get a pack of cheese and another five bucks to get a pound, two pounds of hamburger. So by the time it's all said and done, they feel like they're making more money. It's bumped them up into a new tax bracket, so they're getting to keep less of their money. And then on top of it, they're getting to spend less of their money because now everything costs more. So how is this going to fix the problem? It's not. It's never been designed to fix the problem. It is yet another perpetuating cycle of government wanting you to be dependent on them. Because if they're the ones that keep determining what it is that you're worth, you're going to listen to them when they tell you what to do. It's the primary reason why we have an entire group of people, primarily in Hollywood, that are trying to tell us that the president and the first lady are our flipping parents and we ought to listen to them. Because they have been conditioned to listen to the government. Because when the government is the one that supplies your needs, you will listen to them because you do not have a choice. Your government is currently what regulates your wages unless you are either making more than minimum wage or you are working for yourself. So all they are doing is conditioning you to listen to them. It's what it's been designed to do the entire time, and none of this, and nobody plans on fixing it. I don't care if it's Bernie Sanders. I don't care if it's Donald Trump. Because let's face it, if Bernie Sanders gets the nomination, and if Bernie Sanders makes it to the general, and if, by some miracle, Bernie Sanders wins the general, the first time he goes after the Federal Reserve, somebody's going to put a bullet in his brain. The same thing happened to Kennedy. I mean, let's be real. These people do not want this system fixed because if the system is fixed, you don't need them. This is one of the reasons why I keep trying to tell everyone that Donald Trump is not going to be the solution. Donald Trump is going to be an even bigger, more maniacal extension of the problem because he understands how the system works. He has gamed the system for years. And if you honestly are buying the crap about how he's the only one that can fix the tax code because he's the one that understands it, then you are delusional. He's not going to fix the tax code because if he does, his rich friends are going to drag him out of the White House and beat him to death. They don't want the tax code fixed. They know how to work it. I've been a business owner. I've made six figures, seven figures. I know how to work the system. It's that way for a reason. But a lot of what, and, and don't, don't take what I just said the wrong way, because a lot of what, what a lot of you view as working the system are ways to recoup back money that you've already invested in your own business at a later time. Because the thing that nobody talks about when it comes to running a business is that they usually do not make a profit for a minimum of five years. No matter how hard you try, no matter what you do, no matter how hard you push, no matter how many rows you hoe, you do not typically make money within five years. So what you wind up being able to do is write off all of the things that you've invested in during that time frame so that you can manage to at least get close to breaking even so that you're not continuing to push money into something that is never going to make money and it gives you more money for investing and you keep working and you keep going and you keep doing. I've done it. I'm doing it now. 
The system works if you know how to use it. The problem is we have an entire generation that has grown up thinking the exact opposite of the generation before them. And let me give you an example, because back in the 1930s and the 1940s, John Q. Public and his son would be walking down the street and they would see somebody drive by with, in a Rolls Royce. John Q. Public would look down at his son, Jim, and say, Hey, Jim, I see that little sparkle in your eye. You must really like that car, son. Well, yeah, Dad, I think it's swell. Well, here's the thing, Jim. If you work hard enough and you apply yourself and you bust your tail, someday you can drive a car like that. And that was our thinking because we were the country where anything was possible. We have always been the country where anything was possible. You tell us we couldn't do something, we would find a way to get it done. Now, what we have become is the exact opposite. In today's world, John Q. Public and Jimmy are walking down the street. John Q. Public sees somebody driving down the street in a Rolls Royce, starts glaring at the guy driving the Rolls Royce. Jim looks up at John Q. Public, his dad, and says, well, why is dad glaring at the guy? Well, what the hell, I'll glare at him too. So they start glaring, they're both just glaring at the car as it's driving by. John Q. Public looks down at Jimmy and says, hey, Jimmy, what do you think about that car? Well, I don't know, Dad. I'm not, I'm not so sure. Well, that's all right, son, because, you know, the thing about it is he's got lots of money. He's got lots more money than he needs, and someday we're going to find a way to rip him out of that car. And that's what it's turned into. If you listen to Bernie Sanders' tax plan, it's exactly the same thing. These people have made too much money. They have all of the secondary income off of investments they've made. And so we should tax their investments at 90%. He's trying to rip them out of their Rolls Royce. The problem is he's got a lot of the millennials thinking that that's a really great idea. And I keep hearing everybody talk about how they hope that if it comes down to it, that the person that we're that we're up against in the general is Bernie Sanders. I'm going to tell you, I don't want that to happen. And I'm going to tell you why. If you look at his rallies and you look at his fundraising, the guy has a lot more traction than anybody wants to give him credit for. And that's what scares the crap out of me. If we are not careful, and especially if we put up Donald Trump because he basically is just a more gaseous version of Bernie Sanders who wants basically the same things but can articulate it in a way that people don't think he sounds quite as crazy which I don't understand because to me they both sound certifiable but the simple fact of the matter is Bernie Sanders will wind up doing the same thing that Barack Obama did if he gets the nomination he will come out of nowhere and likely clean the clock of whoever we put up against him, especially if it is Donald Trump. Because he's got the millennial vote. See, here's the thing that, that nobody wants to talk about again with all the polling stuff and everything else that goes on. Polls are outdated at this point, folks. If you look through the, the information for polling, yeah, there 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 is a uh, stipulation that they can use cell phones, but that's only if somebody's sitting at a phone and manually dial, manually dialing the numbers. The majority of the polls that happen nationwide are done by an auto dialer. Auto dialers are restricted to calling landlines only. Most of the people below the age of 25 don't even own a landline anymore. They, you talk to them, what the hell is a landline? I've got my cell phone. I don't need anything else. So we don't really know how well Bernie Sanders is polling. We don't truthfully really know how well anybody's polling because we don't really get the, the data from the millennials because they usually vote in online polls. The problem with online polls is there's nothing that keeps anybody from voting more than once. As an example, I know of someone who shall remain nameless who recently just voted for someone a hundred times before the Drudge Report locked them out of being able to vote again. One hundred times before the system caught into what they were doing and kicked them out. So Bernie Sanders is legitimately an unknown quantity. And what scares me is I know people that want to vote for Bernie Sanders and they tell me that they vote for him because of the idea that he wants to break down the banking industry, break it into smaller pieces, do something about the Federal Reserve. Let me tell you something. If that was the only thing that he was running on, and he was going to leave everything else alone. He would probably get my vote because I don't think we need big banks. 
I've never bought into the banks were too big to fail. And this is going to sound really socialist of me, so people are going to hate me. But I'm going to tell you my honest impression when I first found out that they were going to be sending all of this money back into the banks. We should have sent that money to every person that was underwater. Because they would have given the money right back to the banks, but it would have relieved their mortgages. And it would have put money right back into the economy because the banks would have been bailed out because the people that owed the mortgages would have paid them their money and then they wouldn't have had to pay the money anymore. So the money that they were paying to their mortgages would have been fed right back into the economy. Is it a perfect fix? No. Is it semi-socialist? Probably. But it would have fixed the problem. Because it would have solved both problems. We wouldn't have had to bail out the banks directly. We wouldn't have to have been regulating who got bonuses and what bonuses and why they got bonuses. We could have just said, look, this is what we're going to do. You guys are the ones that wrote the mortgages. We understand that a lot of you wrote these mortgages because you felt like the government was telling you that you had to. So we're going to step in and we're going to take care of John and Susie Q Public over here. And we're going to give them the money. But we're going to make sure that what we're going to do is we're going to write a check with their names on it that is going directly to you to pay off whatever they owe you for their mortgage. Like I said, is it a perfect fix? No, but it would have, damn, would have been a damn sight better than the fix we've got now. All right, I think I have probably ranted and raved enough for one day, and I just realized I haven't given a shout out to the affiliates or our new sponsors, so we're going to wrap up the show uh, doing what I usually do to start the show. want to give a quick shout out to all the affiliates where this show can be heard in both web-based form and terrestrial form. Of course, our home network, the one I'm building, the SparkRadioNetwork.com, which is currently housed on Live 365, we'll, we will be moving away from there over the next few weeks because we were just made aware that Live 365 is closing its doors. So we are looking for a new permanent home to the network. Not sure what we're going to do there. Then we have K98 Talk, the station that picked up my show first and a few others that I'm now basically the programming director of. And then we have the very first terrestrial network that picked us up, which was AMFM247.com, where this show can be heard on their HD internet stream, as well as eight low-power affiliates throughout the country. Then we have the next station that picked us up, which was Red State Talk Radio, where the show can be heard every Sunday morning at 6 a.m. Eastern, 5 Central. And then we have High Point Radio, where the show can be heard every evening live out of Montauk, New Jersey. Well, I say live, it's live for them, not probably. I don't think they're picking up the actual stream. I need to figure out what time they're actually running me because they've never told me. Um, then, of course, we have the next folks to pick us up which were SHR Media, where the show can be heard every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning. I believe it is at 11 Eastern. Then we have Leading Edge Radio Network, where the show can be heard five mornings a week. I do believe it is at 8 Eastern. The last place to pick us up, and the crown jewel, because it is our first terrestrial station with call letters, WNJC 1360 AM out of Philadelphia, part of the Conservative Commando Radio Network over there. I want to give a big shout-out to both of them and Rick Trader the head honcho of the Conservative Commando Radio Network for taking us on over there where the show can be heard every Thursday at 2 Eastern. Now, I do also want to mention, because I've been talking a lot about elections and politics tonight, we have a brand new sponsor. We're going to be getting a spot put together for them here in just a little bit. Uh, they've sent us the information, but I want to give a shout out to them and let them know where you let you know where you can find them. That is politicalbrick.org. They are a pretty neat little company. They have um, basically foam bricks with the pictures and names of either the candidates that you love or you hate. I don't know about you, but half the time, especially if I'm watching the dim debate, I usually want to throw something at my TV screen. With this, I can do it and I don't break my screen. Uh, they currently have a deal where if you go to their website, you can actually order all six of the bricks. I do believe that is $5 for all six. So I do believe they have uh, Sanders, Bush, uh, wait, hang on. Was that Sharpton? Hang on. So like Hillary, San, uh, wow, they do have a Sharpton brick. Wow, I guess it's not all poli not all political. So they have Obama. Let's go over that real quick. There's six of them. So there's Hillary, there's Bush, there's Sanders, there's Sharpton, there's Trump, and there's Obama. 
so you can get all six of them, I do believe, for five bucks. You can also find them on Twitter at, at Political Brick. So feel free to give them a follow, give them a shout out, tell them Rick sent you, order some stuff. Let's show them that we can make them some money uh, for being so kind as becoming a sponsor over here. Also want to give another shout out to another one of our sponsors, and we played his spot already today, but I got to do this anyway. To one Mr. Slickery Trigger, the founder and owner at Rebel Road Tactical. You have come a long way in the few the few months that we have partnered together, sir, and I'm really proud of your progress. Just wanted to again say thank you for uh, agreeing to be a part of the team, and I hope that we can continue to have a long and uh, prosperous relationship. All right, folks, at this point and at this time, it is about time for me to go ahead and get out of here. Now, what you will probably hear when this show stops, if you missed it before, there was a... Uh, the Gavin Mitchell Show is a new addition over here at K98 Talk. It is a great show. I do encourage you to give it a listen at, uh, at sometime when you can. Uh, we haven't got a show page built for them yet because I'm not sure if they want us to archive the shows. But you can hear them every Monday night, typically at 10, uh, 10 Eastern, 9 Central. Um, and then usually uh, shortly following my show. And then also again on Sunday mornings at, I believe, uh, well, it would be noon Eastern, 11 Central. All right, sorry, I seem to have lost my mic there for a second, I think. All right, I am out for the night, folks. Maybe. Hang on. Woohoo! Gremlins everywhere, man. JD, I thought I sent back Host Monkey. All right, folks. I am officially out now that I've tried three times. I'll be back with you live when I can. I will see you when I see you. And until I do, put down the remote, get off the couch, and find a way to get involved. Even if you disagree with 90% of what I say, the only way we're going to fix it is to do something. Have a great night, folks. When our, when our water, water heater, heater broke, down broke down last month, month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. And then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on wash and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-513-6154. That's 1-800-513-6154. Again, 1-800-513-6154. Call now. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602.